tonight we are looking at what I call lessons from the house of the potter lessons from the house of the potter lessons from the house of the potter Jeremiah chapter 18 throughout history and in scriptures God uses many things to teach us Jesus has used bucket of water fish trees boats stones to teach us lessons God used many things also in the Bible to teach us lessons there is a donkey that spoke in the Bible there is a fiery bush bush was burning but the book was not consumed but God uses this to impact lessons into our lives that brings us to this book of Jeremiah chapter 18 and I'd like you to listen very carefully to these deep teachings of the word of God Jeremiah chapter 18 the word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there when you get there I will cause thee to hear my words then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a walk on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it then the word of the Lord came to me saying O house of Israel cannot I do with you as this potter said the Lord behold as the clay is in the potter's hand so are ye in my hand O house of Israel God asked Jeremiah to go to the potter's house and said look at what the man is doing and as the man was using clay to make pot something was wrong as in the clay as he was making it he had to now make another vessel in the same Jeremiah chapter 19 I read from verse 1 thus say the Lord go and get a potter's even earthen bottle and take of the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests and go forth into the valley of the son of Enom which is by the entry of the east gate and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee and say hear ye the word of the Lord O king of Judah and he had the house of Jerusalem just say the Lord of hosts the God of Israel behold I will bring evil upon this place the which whosoever heareth it says shall tingle verse 10 then shall thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee and shall say unto them thus said the Lord of hosts even so will I break these people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again and they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury we've read a little bit of chapter 18 a little bit of chapter 19 in chapter 18 we see Jeremiah watching the potter make a vessel in chapter 19 we see Jeremiah taking the pot and smashing it in chapter 18 the potter was still molding the clay the clay was soft and pliable it could still be formed at that time in chapter 19 the clay was now hardened and had dried it could therefore not be formed again into anything else the work that had to be done was already done and any change at all could only be a smashing of that pot bottom line it is why that clay is soft and pliable that the, the potter can make it into a vessel that is good so herein three characters are identified there is the potter the potter there is the clay there is the wheel on which the clay is made into a pot the clay represents human life the potter is the almighty God the wheel is the time 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 unto everything under the sun that is a time allocated once you allow that time to expire it will be too late there are seasons when the clay can be molded but once that clay has fault in it the potter starts afresh 
It removes the first, starts afresh. But once the thing is already hard, then there is a great problem in it. When a man or woman is destined for greatness, it doesn't matter whether you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. And you begin to disobey the hands of the potter. At the moment when you begin to disobey the potter, you spoil the clay of your life. And the hand of the potter may cease to work on you from there. And if care is not taken, the result may now be complete destruction of that vessel. What hardens the clay in the hands of the potter? It is what the Bible calls hardness of heart. Hardness of heart causes God to reserve a person towards the day of destruction. The Bible says, He who is so often being reproved, but hardness is at, shall be destroyed suddenly. And herein lies a great problem about our destinies. Immediately your destiny is announced in heaven. It is not only the angels of God who hear the announcements. Your enemies who hear those announcements. That behold, this is a great woman. Behold, this is a great man. Immediately that as announcement is made, the enemy that has had the announcement will begin to work as from that day on. If you start misbehaving as a small boy, as a small girl, by the time at your young age, you are already so disobedient to the Almighty, you have marred the clay of your life. And this is why it is good to have a foundation in Christ. All the young ones who have been brought to church now, all those who have been forced to go to Sunday school, you may not like it and you may feel that your parents are just punishing you. By the time you realize what they have done to your life, you will do an endless praise worship. Because at that level, when the person's life is being set, if the enemy has eaten something in the clay, it's like when they are flooring this church now, and somebody mistakenly drops nail into it, or even the lady's shoe, and they mistakenly cement it away, that thing is still inside the concrete. It's hidden there. This explains why some people pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and they don't seem to be getting good results. Right back when they were younger, in the clay of their life, the enemy has, has hidden what he wanted to hide. And that thing the enemy has hidden is there troubling their destiny. I pray for anyone here that there are unconscious deposits in your foundation. The clay of your life has already included strangers. There are deposits there that are hidden inside that nobody can see us about this there. I'm praying for anyone here like that this evening. That the power of God that has no respect for impossibility will visit such people in the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. As far as we don't have hard hearts, God can still do something for you. But when your heart is hard and everyone says, we give up, then the only change the person can experience is smashing. Smashing. I preached a message many years ago. The title of the message was When God's Words Refuse to Change a Man. When God's Words is talking to you. Talking to you. But those words do not change you. The only thing that is left now is king, smashing, and complete turning upside down. God now said, Why don't you allow me to mold your life? Why don't you allow me to mold your life into what you want me to mold? That's what I want to mold you to. Right now, some of us are going through some pressures, and we're complaining, we're shouting. Not knowing that is the fingers of God on the clay of your life squeezing you, squeezing you, trying to form you. When there is somebody always provoking you, always provoking you, and you are getting angry, agitated, it's just that finger squeezing you into what God wants you to be. When people are talking about you and maligning your name and calling you all kinds of things, and you are getting agitated, there is no reason to get agitated. There is a hand molding you. And God is ready, once you are ready, to allow him to work in the laboratory of your life. Like clay in the hands of the potter. We are in the hands of God. No wonder that hymn writer says, My times are in thy hands. Lord, I want you there. 
When your times are, you surrender your times to the hands of the Lord, and you abandon yourself unto His hand, you show no resistance. When He says sit down, you sit down. When He says pray, you pray. You read your Bible, you read your Bible. Fast, you fast. Do witness, you do witness. Go to church, you go to church. And you are pliable like clay like that. Then it can make you into a vessel of honor. A vessel of glory. A vessel that will advertise the power of God. A vessel that will demonstrate the anointing. A vessel that will glorify the name of the Lord. David's father had children. But by the time somebody came along and said, We want to bring all these children out. One of them must become the king of Israel. He didn't bother to bring out David. He had concluded that that one was useless. That one cannot become anybody. Even Prophet Samuel, when he was there, and he saw this tall man, Eliab, coming, he said, surely, this is the man. But God said, look not at his height or stature. He said, for God, not, God looketh not as a man looketh. He said, man looketh at the outward appearance. God looks inside. So, meaning that as qualified as the man looked, God has found something in the clay of his life that is not clear to everybody then, that has not manifested then, but is manifesting now. It's a terrible thing. When the enemy has eaten something in the camp of your life, 10 years you don't see it, 20 years it's not manifesting, 30 years maybe it's not even showing up. All of a sudden, at the age of 40, 45, it begins to show up. A man came to pray city he crying. He had three children, all boys. Those boys that have now become the ages of 20 to maybe 30 something. All three were arrested for arm robbery. All his three sons were arrested for arm robbery. He came to pray city with their picture. Any prayer point you call, whether relevant or not relevant, you will point the picture to the front. He wanted God to intervene in their lives. Eventually, he organized to see me. Again, he showed me the picture when they were little boys. I looked at the picture. I saw the innocence. And some little boys. It was now a mystery. To reconcile these handsome little boy faces wearing their nursery school dresses. And the three in the newspaper who were chained by police. Looking at those two pictures together, I shook my head. There was a day these boys were born. And the neighbors were told that children had been born. Possibly they called a party. All the neighbors were there. And they were rejoicing. That congratulators, rejoice with us. Not knowing that 25 years to come, the source of joy that day will soon become a source of sorrow. Because of something the enemy has hidden in the clay of their lives. Can you raise up your right hand and shout this louder than anyone here? Anything in my life that has not manifested now but will manifest in the future to destroy my destiny. Can I hear you shouting this? Shout it again loud and clear. Dad! In the name of Jesus. It's important to open your mouth and pray this prayer. Anything in my life that has not manifested now, but will manifest in the future, will destroy my destiny. Die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Lessons from the house of the potter. God the Almighty has a broken heart on mankind. The broken heart 
has happened since the Garden of Eden. He had put Adam and Eve on the potter's wheel. And he was molding them, molding them, molding them into a particular design in his head. He's molding them. But all of a sudden, as he was molding them, a problem appeared in the clay. Eve had listened to the serpent. The serpent had beguiled Eve. So the original plan, listen to me well, beloved. The original plan that God had for Adam and Eve was changed. So God had to now sit down again to now make another vessel. Just like the potter here. The plan of God for Adam and Eve did not include suffering. Did not include infirmity. Did not include sickness. Did not include bad luck. Did not include a sense of problems. Did not include suicide. God had planted them into a comfortable garden. And the glory of God was so much in that garden, they didn't need to wear clothes. They didn't need the clothes. They were co- covered by that glory. But by the time there was a fault in the clay, and God had to now begin to sit down, go back to the drawing table, and redo it, what he has redone is what, where we are now. So the original desire will have been better for us all. But the fault in the clay has now made the potter to go back to his drawing table and try and make another vessel. Please, sir, please, ma, try and understand what I'm saying now. It means that a lot of people who are Christians, who are coming to the house of God, the sin they were committing, the terrible things they had done, the disobedience and hardness to the Almighty has converted them to another vessel. Not that original one. A lot of people, a lot of people have been altered from the original plan because of faults in the clay of their life, although they are Christians. God has a broken heart on mankind. The brokenness started from the Garden of Eden. And the broken heart was now expressed in Calvary. It was the problem in the clay in Genesis that led to Jesus coming to the cross in the Gospels. If our forefathers in the Garden did not sin, there would be no need to send a Savior. That ancient hymn writer cries out. He said, it died of a broken heart for you. He died of a broken heart for you. You know when his heart is broken, you expect somebody to be better than he was. And you look at it and say, huh, if you had remained in your original state, and you did not allow the enemy to alter your destiny, your life would have been better now. Your life would have been better now. And it's a serious matter indeed. Many people who are young now, if you mess up this your foundation, then when trouble starts, you'll be surprised. What will then happen later? As you begin to read your whole testament, find God grieving over his people over and over again. And even now, still his heart is still the same. His heart is still grieving over us. That's why the judgment day will not be easy at all. Because when we do run our own agenda, and when we go our own foolish ways, it's not just ourselves that we hurt, but we hurt the heart of him who loved us. When we go our selfish, crooked ways, when we go our self-centered and pride, proud ways, it's not only ourselves that we are hurting, but we hurt the heart of God. When you say, well, it's my leg, I can go to wherever I like. But it was his own leg that was nailed to the cross. I'm the of my hands. I can do what I want with it. It was his own hands that was nailed to the cross. His look, the look on, of God, and his heart is full of sorrow for what we have done with our lives. And it's a tragedy indeed. When instead of you to bring the potter hands back to your life to repair you, they are becoming harder and harder and harder and harder. Harder and harder and harder and harder. You are becoming a more wicked husband, a more wicked wife, a more wicked child. 
A time now comes in the agenda of heaven. Say, so cut him down. Cut this one down. It's just wasting our time. When that time comes, there is no prophet that can help you. In the book of Jeremiah that we are reading here, you find plenty of burnt out forests. But then for those who yield, fresh green leaves are coming up. The theme of Jeremiah is very straightforward, loud and clear. If you turn to me in repentance, I too will turn to you. But if you go away, I too will go further away. That is, God too is able to repair you if you are, if you are willing to change your ways. The principle in Jeremiah is, is very straightforward and loud and clear. So you turn and I will turn. You turn and I the Lord will turn. You turn and I the Lord will turn. There are many people who attend the Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries. But the Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries is not in their lives. There are many people who come here but they don't listen to our teachings. They don't want to dress the way we dress. They don't want holiness within or without. They still want to wear their dangerous clothes. Wear their dangerous chains. Some of them even who are ladies want to wear trousers and slacks and come into the house of God. When God said it's an abomination. Many have been practicing certain things for years. It has not favored them. And they are still continuing. You have painted and painted and painted and painted. Your lips painted, your face painted everywhere. Do all kinds of things. It has not yielded anything. Why continue it? And God brought... Nobody comes to Mountain of Fire by chance. If God brought you here, it's for a purpose. So when He now brings you here and they teach ten naira, you only accept one naira. Take two out of it. Well, uh, I cannot be following everything they are saying. After all, I see some of their members on the streets. They come here, they dress one kind, they dress another kind outside, they look one kind, they look outside. Are those the people God sent you to? Or you say, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. This is part of what causes the clay to be mad in the hands of the potter. Simply because God is not the only hand at work in your life. There are two kingdoms light and darkness. The Bible said the whole world light in wickedness. Just as the hand of God is shaping people for good things, the sinister and wicked hand of the enemy is also shaping men unto destruction. Somebody sent me a news item yesterday. He said, Joe, see what water spirits have done. Then I I now look at it. It was a place in Cambodia. In Cambodia, they were going to wash. They went there to go and worship water spirits. A stampede now happened. And 379 people just died like that. Trampling upon each other while worshipping water spirits. That which they worship eventually killed them. The devil is always very happy when people are living their life for him. The devil is always very glad when you are not yielding to the word of God. The devil is always happy when you are praying, but there is no righteousness in that prayer. You are praying, you are a liar. You are praying, you are a fornicator. You are praying, you are an adulterer. The devil is always, always very happy. But as the Bible says, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Meaning that there is a prayer of unrighteous men and women. It doesn't do much work. There is just plenty of noise. But no... No serious work is being done. If all of us that come here, if we key ourselves into the righteousness of heaven, before we begin to utter one prayer point like this, answers will start rushing. But how can the answer rush to us when some of us have this violent temper? Some of us are still gossiping. Some of us don't pay tight. Some no group, no house fellowship. Some there is nothing they are doing to serve God. Even with all the messages, some are still knee deep into their fornication and adultery. It will appear as if the enemy has glued them into sexual perversion. Yet they are praying. But there is no righteousness in that prayer. The Bible says the effectual prayer of the righteous one availeth much. The reverse is true. The prayer of an unrighteous person does not do anything. He goes up and brings down nothing. Yes, beloved. There is a hand upon you. And evil hand is at work. If you don't cut it off and allow the hand of God to work, that hand will mar your destiny and spoil the clay. 
that evil hand, as terrible as that evil hand was, he even tried to mar the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. He brought temptation to the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I, in most cases, have been mad before we are even born. And the devil is still working hard. He has not finished the attempt to mar our lives. He is still working hard. This is an unfortunate truth. The enemy has started on many lives quite early and has done major havoc to the vessels of life. A woman was going to work one morning. She worked in the bank. As she got to the bus stop, something said, Go back home. Go back home. Why should I have to go back home? She said, I'm always late. The, the, the staff bus is about to come. Go back home. The woman does not come to Martin of her. She now went home. When she went home, she was setting some strange sound upstairs in the bedroom. So she went inside. To the shock of her life, she found her husband sleeping with her daughter, their firstborn, sleeping with each other. The woman stood at the door, opened her mouth, she could not close it. The man saw her, the daughter too saw the mother. They continued. They didn't stop. They continued. When they now finished their fornication, the woman ran to the city room and was crying. Was crying and saying in Yoruba that her life has spoiled. The father and the daughter came to the city room and they warned her. So be very careful. Is it because you saw us today? They started a long time ago. Please, so, don't broadcast us. Don't broadcast us. And if you do, you will leave this place for us. She went to the pastor of their church and said, This is what happened. Man said, was it a dream or a vision? I saw it. The pastor said, what do you want me to do now? I said, I need, I need help. I said, ah, sorry. Go to Mountain of Fire. I said, I don't know. I, can't, I don't understand how to handle this. That's what brought the woman here. And when she came, I said, do you have the phone number of your daughter? I said, yes. So I called the lady. I said, hello. This is Dr. Olukoya. Mountain of Fire. I said, good afternoon, sir. Where are you? I said, so, so, please. Are you free? Yes. I said, I'd like to see you. And she came. And she saw her mother. I said, Mommy, repeat what you said. And the mother repeated it. And he guess it's true, sir. It's true. I said, but don't you think it's an abomination? Uh, well, it could be abomination, but I have plenty of boyfriends, but uh, I enjoy daddy more than all of them. That was many years ago. Three weeks ago. This young lady put a distress call to my phone. She was dying of cancer in India. The two breasts had cancer. The uterus had cancer. Last night, she died. No marriage, no husband, no children. The father is still alive. The mother too, still alive. The enemy hid something quite early in that life. And it has done major havoc in the vessels of the person's life. I want you to understand this very, very well. All those say, play, 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 husband, play, play, husband, play, play, husband. Small, small boy, boy of uh, six months, is at the back of the mother. And the mother is saying, my son will marry your daughter. Eight, six months, trouble starts. Ready, very early in life. Herein lies the greatest problem in deliverance. That some structures are in place, which we call cryptic structures. Dumb and deaf structures. Sometimes deaf to prayer, deaf to praise worship. And only to do destruction in the life of the person. Can somebody here raise up the right hand again and shout this loud and clear? Satanic deposit in my life. From my mother's womb. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to say this loud. My part Jesus. Jesus. Aha.
In Jesus' name we pray. License from the house of the potter. To be quite honest with you, beloved, evil powers are already congratulating themselves on many lives for a job well done. For a job well done. And sometimes, when you as a minister want to get involved, they come to you at night. That's why pastors need prayers. After you pray for somebody, pray that the person should be delivered. They wait for you to get home. When you get home, sometimes as you are praying, you notice there is a presence in your room. You open your eyes and see it's a spirit being, a structure standing. So yes, yes. What do you want? That's how we talk to them. But you say you want to become a minister. <laughs> you want to become general overseer. God have mercy on your life. When all these small, small boys come and say, God said I should become a general verse, I say, Ha! Ah. So, please, oh, the first place you should go to is psychiatric hospital. Let them check that your brain, whether it is working properly. General verse, they come. Say, Yes, what do you want? Say, Sir, man of the Most High God. Normally, they don't call the name of Jesus. Man of the Most High God. Man of the Mighty One. Servant of that great one. That's how they address. Say, so today, you were praying for so and so. Weren't you? Say, so, yes. Say, so, please. We are not here to fight you. We are not fight. We can't fight you. We know that one. And we are not. We say, I didn't fight. I'm not shouting. Please. That person. Next time the person comes, don't pray for the person. Is that clear? That's all. So, please. Just take your answer of this matter. Say, so, after all, the, the, she's not your wife she's not your child not your family member so what's your problem? leave this one alone pray for other people but this particular person don't pray I said but why? she's a child of God I said yes that's what she's saying she's saying she's a child of God now but did she tell you when she was drinking blood in our camp? did she come to tell you when she was sleeping with our members? did she tell you that even as she is She's carrying our spiritual pregnancy. So please, 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 man of God, take your answer. Good day. And they disappear and walk away. <laughs> you want to be a deliverance with the general verse? When such people are, when such things appear in your room, the yeah, blood of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. You are finished already. But then, yes. It's a regular thing, yes. That's your own agenda. Right? I pray that any power that has made it a full time work to monitor and afflict anybody's life here I bury them now in the name of Jesus and I command your freedom 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 in the name of Jesus you and I we are free will a very dangerous instrument God gave to us. Free will. Ha. Has the most dangerous equipment in the hand of man. God has given us the power to say yes or no. Power to say yes or no to what God is saying to you. Don't ever think in your wildest dreams that all those who come to Mountain of Fire, they are planning for heaven. Don't think so at all. There are some, they are not planning for heaven at all. Some are here just because the enemy is pursuing that they want the enemy to back off. Some are here because they want to marry a prayerful wife. They know they are in trouble. So they say, well, if I marry a girl from Mountain of Fire, if you see, when I'm committing my iniquity, she'll be praying at home. So it will be causing trouble at work. I say, don't touch me, my wife is praying. Beloved, the sad thing is that we have pushed away the divine hand and made room for Satan's hand. Who is always looking for opportunity to destroy? We have pushed aside his hand. And many pushed away the hand of the Lord. And the hand of the enemy is now working on them. That's why the Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your man. He said, he said Do not be formed by the strange hand of Satan in the world. That's what he's saying. Don't allow them to frame your life. Every day we make our choices. And every day we prepare for eternity. When there is flaw in the clay of our lives, something might have gone wrong in the mixing. 
suddenly the potter comes across something inconsistent in the person's life. He has been doing it, he has been doing it. Ah, all of a sudden, he saw this small jealousy. All of a sudden, he saw the pride. All of a sudden, he saw the unbrokenness. All of a sudden, he saw the fornication. All of a sudden, he saw the stealing. And the vessel is now mad in the hands of the potter. And once it's mad like that, there are two options. He will take out that which is mad. Form a vessel that he wants to make, he cannot make. He now has to make another vessel mostly inferior to the one he wanted to make before. Meaning that a lot of people are living second hand life now. And it's a very sad situation. In Luke chapter 2, verse 34. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. God has a broken heart for men. And his heart is still grieving even as of now. There are people sitting down here, this congregation, talented, brilliant, wealthy, handsome, beautiful, resourceful, who just come to the house of their fathers to warm the seat and go home. Nothing to contribute, nothing to do, nothing. Some come and say, Gio, I see that you are constructing things here. Hey, how can I contribute? I say, ah, this is what we do. Some come. They see it. They are able to help. They ask you quiet. This place. They don't want to help. They don't want to help. They don't, don't recognize people here. And if they, if they you can just come to the front now. Say, so I need 10 people to give me 10 million naira. And if you give me that 10 million naira, I gotta pay some special prayer for you. And anoint your head and your legs. Who will come forward then? That kind of offering is not acceptable in level. But the Bible says, let not your left hand know what the right hand is doing. Luke 2.34 And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold this child, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which is spoken against. Say so Jesus is set up for the fall and rising of many. Listen carefully beloved. Many come into contact with the perfect hand and the perfect ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. But instead of allowing that hand to mold them, instead of allowing their hand to result in their rising up, it brings them down. It comes into contact with it, it brings them down. When we were moving into our house many years back, many, many years back, one video player just vanished. We looked for it, we couldn't find it. We forgot about it. Ten years later, somebody wrote me an anonymous letter. Said, Dear Dr. Lukoya, I was one of the bricklayers that worked in that house ten years ago. While I was working there, I stole a video player. I put it inside a wheelbarrow and I put a broken block on top of it. That's how I was able to steal it out. Said, But now that his life is now in tatters, that could we still forgive him? So he came into contact with us. His meeting us should have been a blessing to his life. But because of the thief inside his clay, it resulted in his fall. A lot of people come across the perfect hand of Jesus. But instead of that hand to lift them up, it brings them down. Because there is something in the clay of their life which they refuse to address. Judas in the Bible will probably have gone to his grave well and live, will have lived a comfortable life if he never came across Jesus. Came across Jesus, the hidden flaw in his makeup marred him in the hands of the potter. He was now destroyed by that which will have made him great. Had he not come across Jesus, he would probably not have been ruined. There are two people in the Bible called Caiaphas and Ananias. They were priests. Caiaphas and Ananias, they will have gone down to their grave in Jewish history as respectable, honorable priests. But Jesus came into their way and they were ruined. Because there was a flaw in the clay of their lives. Jesus came to bless, but they were ruined because of something in their makeup which was exposed by the presence of Jesus. There was something in the care of their life which was not repented of. And now it destroyed them. 
Pilot will have gone down in Roman history as a good governor. But he met Jesus. And he went down in history as a double-minded man. He knew how to do good and did not do it. And the man was wasted. Pilate in his weakness gave way to man and chose evil. He handed Jesus over to them. And then washed his hands in water. He I have no hand in this matter. Peter was a respectable fisherman. This is another way now. On the other side. Peter was a respectable fisherman. He met Jesus. Is meeting Jesus because it's rising up. So, beloved, it depends on what is in you. What's in you? Right? Where you are tonight, is there room for repentance and brokenness in your life? Then God can still make another vessel of you. Right there where you are sitting tonight, let your inner eye behold Jesus on the cross. Let him behold his grieving heart. The Bible says, He died of a broken heart. You. Close your eyes and bow down your head. I want you to talk to God yourself. Areas in which you have not been your best for the master. Listen to forgive you. The flaw in the clay of your life. That have been pampering, pampering, pampering. For how long will you pamper iniquity? How long will you be giving reasons to support iniquity? Ask him to forgive you. Tell him to take it out of the clay of your life. It can be another vessel of honor. Talk to the Lord now. Be my life, oh, make it ever new. Be my life, oh, may I be like you. Amen. Rise up your feet now. This prayer has <laughs> helped thousands of saints. And for as many as who pray from their heart here tonight, it will definitely help you. It will definitely help you. They used to teach us this prayer when we were small children in Sunday school. We didn't know the impact. We didn't know the impact of these things. Now you will raise up your voice. Oh God! Break every idol in my heart. Can I hear the sisters shouting it? Your voice is not loud enough, sisters. Let me hear the brothers roaring like thunder. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray.